Capital City house prices have now fallen 7.5% from their peak. The Reserve Bank has delivered another quarter of a percentage point increase to take the cash rate to 3.35%. Tonight, nearly $15 billion worth of relief to power bills, rent assistance, welfare payments and cheaper medicines are in the budget. In the world has become more complex and more challenging even over the course of the last few months and so we won't be completely immune from that. Here we are, can you believe it? It's midway through the year already and I thought it'd be time to look at how the economy is going. It's just one of a sweep of price hikes that have taken inflation to 7.8% for the year, the highest in 33 years. At the start of the year, everyone was worried about inflation and interest rates and not much has changed, to be honest. Although I feel like the inflation issue is going to be vastly different by the end of the year. With inflation, it's looking like we've gone through the worst of it, although just because it's headed down, that still means prices are continuing to go up. It just means that things won't go up in price as fast as what they were six months ago been another rise in inflation prompting some concerns the Reserve Bank could lift interest rates again. And people are really starting to feel the pinch when it comes to the weekly shop or pay the electricity bill or pay two bucks a litre at the Bowser. Added to that, Phil Lowe and friends down at the RBA are continuing to raise interest rates. They want to beat inflation into the ground. Do lead people to economise on, on housing, don't they? Mm. Kids don't move out of home because the rent's too expensive or you decide to get a flatmate mm. uh, or a housemate. Because it's, so that's, that's the price mechanism at work. Unfortunately, that means a lot more pain for the average person in the form of increased interest rates. So in that respect, it's been more of the same. What's new is the growing debt our governments have. Really it's not new, it's just been that the media has been putting other things in front of us. To learn more about the growing debt in Victoria, you can check out a video I did last week. The debt was increasing before the pandemic hit and now it's accelerating. The state is cooked and the growing debt is going to become an issue in the years to come. We also have two other problems, productivity and housing. Before I get into housing, I want to touch on productivity because it's totally ignored and it's actually killing us. What happens when you create a lot of money, which is what happened when rates dropped to 2% and our governments borrowed to kingdom come, they borrowed so much money that basically you're divorcing the dollar from its value. Less work got done because many of us were locked inside our houses for the best part of two years. At the same time, we created 20 to 30% more money. The obvious outcome is inflation, but there are second order problems we're now facing you have a record low unemployment. You have workers that have a high amount of rights so they can decide to be lazy if they want. Who can blame them? The world we're living in doesn't really incentivize anyone to work hard to get ahead. On the other side, if they get sacked, they can just get a job probably for more pay somewhere else because there's such a labor shortage at the moment. At the end of the day, there's not enough work getting done to earn the money to pay the debt back. The writing's been on the wall for housing for several years and it's multifaceted. You have house prices in general, nothing including a pandemic and lockdowns have been able to put a dent in it. It's exactly the opposite, it just continues to go up. You have not enough houses and skyrocketing rents leaving more and more on the breadline. You also have these issues for all the builders operating profitably around without going bankrupt. None of this has changed. All of this has been exacerbated. By the way, I regularly post about the property market, so subscribe for future updates. I feel like in the last six months, not much has changed. We had that month where the RBA paused the interest rate rises and then everyone breathed a sigh of relief. Then they changed their minds again and we've had another couple of rate rises since. I wanna come back and note something about the inflation. It's not as if people are out there buying all the beers, for example, and they can't brew enough beers fast enough to keep up with the demand. 
the increases are coming from the supply side. The small businesses are raising prices to stay afloat, but the big guys are still making big profits. This is where we circle back to all that printing of the money that got done back in 2020. It's decreased the unemployment rate so far and unfortunately we need to crack that. We can't have a record low unemployment and fix the inflation problem at the same time. At some point businesses will raise their costs to a point where people just stop spending. When people stop spending, businesses stop earning and they'll have to start letting go of workers. Whilst this first half of 2023 hasn't seen too much development in the economy, I feel like the second half is going to be vastly different. We're starting to see the signs of money being taken out of the economy. This is the effect of higher interest rates. In the US, the inflation is dropping and it's dropping at a rapid rate. Usually what happens there is a good bellwether for the rest of the global economy. As for inflation in Australia, it's turned, but it's still too early to confirm if it's trending down or not. If it's trending down, then the narrative in the media is going to change vastly in the coming months. And to be honest, I think most of us understand there's more pain to come and we just want it to come and get it over with. Let's see what the rest of 2023 holds for us. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.